The biggest problem I see is with disengaged business owners. They're being approached daily, really, by all different kinds of marketing people claiming to be experts in online marketing, SEO, radio, print, and let's face it, that's not their expertise. And so they have to blindly give over control to someone who just has impressed them with a sales pitch. And at the end of the day, if it hasn't worked, they have fired their webmasters, they've had poor results and spent a lot of money, or they have a website that just is horrible, they usually show up at my door. And we hit the reset button and we say, okay, let's, let's take a step back and let's see exactly what's happening. What do you need it to achieve? What are the problems that your customers need you to solve? And let's create an online marketing campaign, a findable campaign based on their needs. There's a human behind every click and business owners tend to think it's all about the robot or Google when it was always only about the human. I started my career at Yahoo Search Marketing. Some of you might remember them. They were kind of a big deal when I was there. And I traveled the country training advertisers to spend a million dollars a month in paid search advertising. My job was to roll in and make them buy, sell. My job was to roll in and they would spend more money than they already were. So 300 slides in two a day with three points and a story on every single one. And we'd literally scrape them off the floor at the end of the day. And when I left that career, my corporate training career with Yahoo, I decided that there had to be a better way. So when I had my agency findability group, I worked very hard to demystify the whole process of findability. I hate the word SEO. I think it's riddled with misunderstanding. It's like this magic algorithmic equation that no one really understands and everyone feels like the big bad Google is never gonna like me. And when I started pulling it back and saying it was never about Google, it was about the fact that you haven't asked, who cares? I do what I do because I have a way of looking at data and seeing the human need from the data. I guess I've just spent way too long in keyword research tools. But after a while, I can, I can feel when they're there and when they're not there. And I can interview the client and I can really understand what pain did they solve. And my job is to translate that into the way they search. So I do what I do because I know I can make a big difference for them. I can stop them investing in haphazard marketing strategies that just never really work. And we get everything reset on a, on a plan, a runway, if you will, to great findability. I honestly thought that I was destined to work with corporate America. I thought I could go in there and roll in and, you know, I'd done that at Yahoo for years and worked with million dollar advertisers and it was all about the numbers. When I left corporate America and started my own agency, I knew at that point that my favorite clients were the underdogs. They were the mom and pops that had left their corporate jobs, taken huge risks, huge financial risks to step out on their own. Yet they were the most preyed upon when it came to marketing and marketing people. So when I started working with clients, in my agency, we had, they were like, it's like $10,000 a month. And we did everything for them. They wrote a check, we gave them reports, everyone's happy. Meet our numbers, great. But people kept coming to me that couldn't afford us. And so I wrote my first book, Findability Formula, because at least I had something to give them. I'd feel so bad. I'd be like, here, maybe that will help you. I'm sorry, but we're just too expensive, I can't help you. And so when I sold my agency and built Findability University, I was like, this is my chance. This is my chance to help the little guy, the David and Goliath story. And I have a wonderful client. They are a company called Pick On Us. Now, they had an interesting problem because they actually sell bamboo products. They started with toothpicks. It was a little tiny matchbook 
You ever seen these where you pop open the lid and there's matchbooks in it? That's theirs. They've patented and trademarked it. So when they came to me, though, they were having stifling sales. They were getting a lot of interesting email around bullying. What? Bullying? Pick on us. Pick on me. Pick on you. There was a weird confusion between their name and an active problem that was happening on the web. So they're actually getting search results and search volume for toothpick and bamboo as well as pick on us, bullying issues. So what we did is we take a step back and we fix that. Then they had decided that their word was picks. They said restaurant owners, cruise line purchasers, they use the word picks. It's a restaurant lingo. And we went in and we put picks into Google and guess what's there? NFL picks. Then we go to Google Images, all guitar picks. Back to video on Google, again, all NFL. So at that point, they finally saw the light. We knocked their website down and we built it from scratch. And it was all about creating beautiful food experiences. Because they didn't sell bamboo products, they sold perceived value. The products were just the holders, the vessels of profitability for the companies that hired them. So we were able to hire top chefs all up and down Southern California. We give them these products and the chefs would make these gorgeous images for us to use in our media and our social media. And by doing that and not just having a pile of toothpicks, which is not very interesting at all, we were able to increase their revenue by 300% in the first six months because they stopped talking about picks and they started talking about perceived value. What differentiates me is I've, I'm a translator. I can go into a company, I can sit down with a team, and I can deconstruct whatever they've been doing. I can tell exactly why it's not working. It's typically because it's all about them. We call it the me, me show. It's about me and my services and my testimonials. And oh, by the way, you should contact me because I'm so great. This is a sales brochure. It is not a thought leadership platform. Google was founded on indexing professorship content at the Stanford campus. They wanted to create Larry Page and Sergey Brin from Google. They wanted to create a, a repository, a database of all the content that was actively being created on the Stanford campus because most people didn't have any access to that and most of it didn't even get to the library. So they're like, oh, we got to fix this. So they built this database to house all this cutting edge, learned, amazing content that was being created. Then as it grew in popularity, then it was all of a sudden, now we have to take the Dewey Decimal System, like in the library, that's how I find you there, and blow it up to indexing and archiving everything on the internet. That's what the Google algorithm is today. It's just trying to find the thought leaders, the Stanford professors under any specific category. And when you can show up to your online searchers in a way that serves them, educates them, answers their pain, and you walk away from, it's about me, it's all about me, you should hire me, we should work together, and you start talking about how you can help them, that's the differentiation between someone who comes and offers you a $10,000 a month SEO package and someone who wants to walk that path with you. At Findability University, we go arm in arm, we roll up our sleeves, pop open the laptop, and I pull the curtain back and show them easy, non-technical strategies to rank right under major brands like Walmart, Amazon, Best Buy, and it works.